Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everyone. This is for anybody that's leading a team. Maybe you're the CEO of a company. Maybe you just own a company. Maybe you're looking to up your personal game in terms of leadership. I've got somebody here that's going to give you a lot of insight. Today, we're going to talk about leadership through the lens of observation. Really, really keying into what your team has potential for. I think sometimes we miss that and we just go on autopilot and we tell them what to do, but we're not mm -hmm. actually <laughs> really looking at each individual team member. This is just a, a part of what he gives insight on. Relevance for coaching. Uh, coaching for relevance. I'm sorry. <laughs> <dot com. laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I rely on looking on your sign there, and uh, it, you were in front of it. So this time, yeah. like coaching for relevant, yeah, there <laughs> and there it is, right there. There yeah, you go. He is Mr. Randy Swamey. He's back with us. How you doing, Randy? Good, good. Glad to be with you again, Steve. Yeah, wonderful to have you back here. We've been talking about the neuroscience involved in all of this mm -hmm. in leading a team. Um, seems like today we're getting back to a little bit of the forgotten basics in terms of identifying the skills and the the intricacies of each individual team member? Yes, absolutely. And and a key point of that, there are some neuroscience aspects of it in terms of awareness, but I'll just kind of uh, uh, step forward on this and then we can communicate a little bit. But uh, the, the thing, it, it dovetails a little bit out of kind of what we talked about the last couple of uh, sessions where we were talking about how different people in challenging situations, not everything is road academic and all that. We sort of talked about that. Uh, and and this is very aligned with my organizational maneuverability concept, uh, you know, leading your team in rapidly changing, unpredictable environments uh, kind of thing where not everything is road academic. Uh, and And so many people today just and, and if you understand the neuroscience of it, it's going back to their cerebellum, which is where they put all of their, you know, academic things that somebody taught them years ago or whatever kind of thing, which may be true. But you know what? Maybe some aspects where it's not quite as applicable and, and true and all that. And so uh, when you're talking about leading your team in a challenging situation, you have to understand the processing, which is your frontal lobe here of what you're really seeing here. And let me just kind of go forward with it. I'll take kind of what we've hinted at before, but take it to a deeper level uh, when you're talking about this leadership aspect of it, because leadership is not just, you know, uh, telling people what to do. Uh, I'll, uh, and in fact, I, I love it. I'll just show, share one quote and then I'll move on with this. But uh, the quote comes from Steve Keating and it says, authentic leaders don't force compliance. They earn commitment. And you know what? Hmm. What are you truly gathering within your people? Are you interacting with them? Are you becoming part of that team and leading that team in such a way that the level of commitment is going crazy. And that's a good picture of what I'm about to share. Cause you know, last week we talked about the, the challenging situations and the environment that your team may be in right now. And I'm, and, and I think you'll remember this, Steve, that last uh, uh, I mentioned one thing I said, each person on your team may see different factors that are involved that are coming on the scene. Uh, and and you know what? It's not just everybody doing rote, superficial stuff, but this person over here may not be the strongest person on your team, but you know what? They may see a factor that nobody else saw. And so what I want to just kind of throw out uh, as a thought here, when you're looking at your leadership in a challenging situation or in a challenging environment, when you are leading your team, not just what are you telling them, not just that, but what are you observing in your team, you know? Because I'll tell you some of the dysfunctional ways that this happens a lot of times is this, that if you have one person that's aware of one factor that's coming on the scene, guess what? 
when he mentions it, somebody else on the team says, oh, we, we don't need to worry about that. Just go this way, you know, kind of thing. Mm. And unfortunately, you see a lot of managers that sort of have that mindset. And you know what? If it turns out that that factor is not, you know, going to be overwhelming, you know what? That may be true. But also, guess what? It may be that as you move forward, it'll kind of sneak in and come to play a little bit. And if one of your team members is aware of that and they're watching for that, that can be good. That because they, mm-hmm. they can communicate when this thing is coming on on board or whatever. But here's the thing: if you have one person on your team that comes up with something like that and they say, "Oh, you know," and another person on your team who may be somebody who's wanting to become the boss one day and all that kind of stuff, and what what is so often typical in a lot of places today is that person walks over to them and just tells them to shut up. You're being distracted. Just go here, do this kind of thing. And guess what? If they're totally focusing on that and it's not critical, okay, there can be a certain aspect of that, but did they communicate with their team member in a successful, official, you know, trusting, professional way because if they come up with that kind of a mindset they probably didn't and what are you going to do as the leader guess what you have to have a conversation with that person that said that it's not to shut them down but there's a lot of aspects where that's an evidence within your team where the synergy is not what you think it is and Mm -hmm. the bottom line is if you develop your team as you go to the point where the synergy is truly developed, amazing and miraculous results can happen. And and so it's just a key aspect when you're talking about this, that uh, as a leader, what are you truly observing? Because I'll tell you, you'd be surprised at how many people in different industries I've heard, not people that I was coaching, but just people that I was connected with kind of thing that have said that, you know, well, that should have been like this. Well, it wasn't, you know, and 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 a lot of times you have people that are trying to be sort of the uh, ineffective leader or whatever kind of thing, you know, sometimes say that because they're just casting blame on why it didn't work out right. Well, it didn't work out right because the synergy of the team dropped off or whatever. And 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 that's a key aspect that often people don't think about. And um, and so really, uh, when you're the leader of your team, of let's say that you have 10 people working on your team or whatever, guess what? For those people, you know, are you aware? Do you have clarity and awareness on where each of those people sort of are doesn't mean that they're fall short. Not doesn't mean, Oh, they got to grow a lot to be like me. No, not like that. It's like, what are the aspects that they kind of are aware of that sometimes the other ones aren't. If you have two of those people that are very much aware of this one risk that's coming on that nobody else did, but you also have two other people that are maybe aware of a risk over here that's coming on scene that nobody else did guess what? That can be a benefit for your team. And if the team does not have the ability to truly bring all that together, now it doesn't mean they got to be the most important things to think about going forward. But, but, you know, sometimes you have to walk toward the risk in order to be successful and push through it, you know, kind of thing. Uh, There's other times where just realize what it is, but it's not going to get in the way at all. Mm -hmm. And, and all that. And do you have clarity and the right vision and thinking about whether that is true, but also does your team have that? And are you helping develop that in the way you are modeling leadership for your team, but also how you are developing your team members to the point where when those factors come on scene, guess what? It's not destructive. It's not, you know, negative. It's uh, the awareness is there uh, and how they communicate. Because here's the thing. It may be 
and this is something a lot of times sometimes that you might see in the military but guess what if there's two people that have that focus there on that factor guess what we can all still keep me moving in the direction we're going in but guess what if they're aware of that factor and you're kind of watching for it a little bit that can be good because you know what if the factor sneaks in in an unexpected way they can come up and go hey you know what just so everybody knows and you know people can be aware of it and there might be times where you say okay you two people keep that from coming on the scene because that's that's good we need that and and as the team is going forward so when you talk about this aspect of team synergy it's not just everybody doing exactly the same thing exactly the same way and just you know put it in academic rote mindsets no it's art do you truly have a degree of synergy with our capability of people do they truly work together mm. in order to overcome and achieve or as you're watching your team are there some times where you sort of question it and I think I shared this with you one time. This is just a real simple picture of it. But I think I shared this on one of our shows maybe a year ago kind of thing. But there was a time, and I think I shared this with uh, with uh, with either you or Jill, but uh, I was standing there when I was the, uh, uh, the site manager for our uh, detachment at Griffiths Air Force Base uh, for our strategic air defense training contractor role there. Uh, and I was brought in as the new manager because they let go of the previous manager because of the dysfunction that was happening. And they wrote me up about two months after I started and said, Randy took a problem site and turned it into the showcase of the company in minimum time. But here's one of the things that I did. And this is what a lot of managers today don't really totally understand. And it's a way that you got to have your processing and thinking going to be aware of what's really growing and happening. But uh, we were in a meeting as, as a team and I was leading the, the, the meeting, but I found out, you know, it was kind of amazing because some of the discussions that the people that worked for me, there was about, there was about 15 people that worked for me. And, um, uh, there was some discussions on some different aspects of it. And as a, as a uh, leader, you know what I did? I sat there just like this. Well, I didn't sat, sat there. I was standing up, but I stood there just like this. And I was listening and I was letting them explore a little bit. And what's amazing is they were coming up with a couple of good ideas and I didn't interfere. I didn't disconnect. What I did is I sort of let them go. And it was sort of interesting because there was one uh, guy that, you know, said, you know what, we got to write some of these notes down. And he stood up and he went over to a chair with a pen and a pad. But as he started to sit down, he froze and he just looked at me. And all I did is I looked at him and I went like this. I just went. I winked at him and I nodded my head and he smiled and he sat down and made out a bunch of the notes that they had come up with and 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 that's just a simple picture of kind of what I'm talking about because when you're looking at your team in a challenging situation uh or a, a where not everything's the same and not everything across the kind of the sphere that you're trying to work on uh is exactly the same and exactly road academic uh as a leader and as the manager what are you truly modeling? And even when you're not there, is your team going to be able to come together and not just have one person try to control it all, but truly work together and, and, and bring the results in? Be aware of maybe what some of the risks uh, are coming on the scene that you didn't expect. But but also having some situational awareness where you're aware of when that is starting to happen versus when it isn't. And so it's just something to think about when you're talking about leading your team uh, and, and the, the simple uh, kind of uh, surface thing that I just uh, get people to think about is this, that uh, on this one issue, that what are you noticing in your team? And I don't mean academic. 
I don't mean he should have said this. No, you know, that kind of thing. Or this factor should have been like that. That factor shouldn't have come on scene. That was stupid, you know, kind of thing. All of that is dysfunctional. But what are you aware of in your team for what they are uh, pulling together? And to what extent are they growing because of their ability to to consider and to process the information and to catch a vision that may be exactly the vision you were thinking about. Now, if you need to tweak the vision because of something <coughs> with the company, you may need to do that a little bit. But if they go through that process, that can be a very beneficial thing for them. And so, uh, uh, but when you, if, if you do need to tweak it, it doesn't mean you're sitting there saying, hey, you screwed this up. No, they didn't. They did a good job on it. We're going to tweak it a little bit. And as a leader, what I would say is, how might we have to tweak that a little bit to uh, to get them thinking and processing and have them think through it and come out with some thoughts and everything? And guess what? A lot of times they're going to go right where I would have. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean, but you know what? Walking away, they have the sense of appreciation of success of growth of 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 becoming you know uh and and all that and you know what it, it's not just about you telling them thing but when you're talking about that sort of aspect when you have you know different people that see different aspects in the factors that come on scene or whatever uh, it doesn't mean everybody just shuts their brain off and goes with what you told them it doesn't mean everybody just shuts the brain off and and says well here's what the academic says so it should be this way well you know what not always and and what are you going to be able to do in terms of leading and modeling for your team but also developing your team so that when unexpected factors come on scene and the outcome may not be totally predictable the outcome ends up a lot better than anybody expected and in fact, the 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 lead the, the the head leaders of your organization realize what you did and what you accomplished, and 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 they're just going, "Wow, wow," you know, kind of thing. Not because of you, but because of how you led and grew the team. And guess what? Some of those aspects of growing that in your team have to happen prior to the event where it's needed. And it's just, you know, if you're if if you're just making people shut their brains off and 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 close their ears and just do what you say. You know that that, there are times, guess what, when things are going crazy, there are times when you may need to do that. But do you have clarity on when you should do that and when you should not when you're interfering, when you're getting in the way of the true success of your team or. Not. And so it's just something to think about when you're talking about this and uh, looking at really reaching radical results with your team uh, in, in perhaps challenging situations, but, uh, but also what is your team becoming? What are you leading and modeling and, and showing them about it? And what, you know, if, if you have people on your team that step back for just a second, go, wow, yeah wow, I didn't notice that. I didn't realize that. Oh, man. And it's not because of anything you told them. It's because of something they experienced and they saw as they perceived it. And so it's just some things to think about when you're talking about the this kind of a, uh, a situation that is not road academic and when things are just uh, um, uh, a challenging situation or a challenging environment or challenging task or whatever. Um, you know, the, the, you know, you gotta be aware of some things that so often people think, well, I just, it's my job to just tell you what to do. And you just shut up, you shut up and go do what I tell you to do. You know what? In a lot of today's world, that isn't what you really want. Do you feel something to think about? Randy, that, uh, a lot of times those in a position of authority don't really know their team members don't really know what their passions are don't really know truly know what their skills are and you know what there is a certain probably truth to that in a lot of cases 
because you know what, you know, the old, the old school sort of education was all just, you know, you're the, you're the leader. You just tell them what to do. They should do what you tell them what to do. If they don't, you kind of send them home or whatever, you know, that, that kind of thing. But you know what? It's, do you truly understand your people? Do you truly know them? Do you, do you connect with each individual in such a way where you're generating a real degree of synergy. But here's the thing, if you can do that successfully to, to go opposite to what you just said, and, and but you're right, that is something that is sort of historically common, you know, kind of thing. Um, the, the, uh, the aspect on that is that if you can really connect with your people in the, in the way that they, like, like I mentioned with that quote, but they're not looking there, you know, you're not pressing compliance you're helping engender within them commitment because deep in here, they want to be committed to what you're trying to accomplish. They want that. And it's not because you told them that mm. it's because within themselves, they sensed that they grew that within themselves. Yep. And that's what authentic leaders truly do, particularly in challenging situations like this. It's almost as if the team is attracted to the leader they just want to work with that person. They feel a certain vibe, a certain energy, mm -hmm. uh, respect, all of that, where it's not just the job. They're, they, they're showing up almost invested in, in the whole situation. You know, and that's true. And I'll just give you one quick example on this because, uh, in, and this is in my autobiography, which uh, I think you know is is out there on Amazon now. But one of the finest leaders with whom I've ever served was uh, Lieutenant Colonel at the time, but he became four-star general, Richard B. Myers, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff from about 2001 to 2005. But I flew with him and I worked in his squadron for, uh, I think about two to two to three years. And, um, but I'll tell you what, I tell people, and I mentioned this in the book, that he's the finest leader with whom I've ever served. But you know what? I didn't learn a single thing from anything he ever told me. What I learned from was experiencing and observing how he did what he did and how he came across and what he did. And, uh, and, and that was huge. And to, to this day, I still say that, that he's the finest leader with whom I've ever served. And so that's something that is not common generally in, in managers, you know, uh, and stuff, but that is a key aspect because I would have gone with him anywhere for wow. uh, to, to do anything. And regardless of the threat, regardless of the Now, obviously if it was illegal or if it was, if it was not good, then yeah, I wouldn't have, but I mean, I knew <laughs> he wouldn't do that. And, but he was a good example of this, uh, how you engender commitment and not the, you know, not the, compliance or whatever and but that's something that as a leader you got to realize and that's a, in part what i'm talking about thank you for asking the question because uh, are you doing it in such a way that your people just feel like we're supposed to go do this you know uh, you, you just shut up well, let's go do this but it's a degree of commitment and synergy oneness that comes into play where they are working together, not doing exactly the same thing. You got a couple of people that are kind of applying it and focusing it here, a couple more maybe here, a couple more maybe here, but it's moving in the right direction. And and that can be huge. But with, with the way you put it there, I think you're right. And I'll tell you, I, I shared this before, but uh, in 2001, I was driving my car to the car wash and I heard uh, – on the news it said uh, and we have a new you know chairman of the joint chiefs of staff i said oh really and they said the first uh, on the radio they said the first air force general and i went oh really and then they mentioned general richard b myers and i almost crashed my car because i was so excited and like wow. yeah 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 kind of thing like this and and because uh, i had not heard it of him since he was a full bird colonel but wow it, it just uh but you know what when you're truly leading, particularly in rapidly changing, unpredictable times, but you lead in such a way that your people experience that, they that commitment goes within them where they want to work together because they care about what we're doing. They care about you as a leader. They care about what this is going to look like, the results we're going to achieve, and all that. 
guess what? All of that is huge in that. And that, but that's very critical when we're talking about this. It's almost as if, and I mean this in a very positive way, but take it in my description. It's like your team has drank the Kool-Aid, but in a good way where they, they're, they're, they're on board. You, they want to be part of your team because your energy, your leadership is just, it's almost if you're throwing a party and you, you, you know, if you're throwing good parties, yeah. everybody wants to show up there and they'll, they'll bring whatever they need to bring because they want to be part of it. Uh, yeah. Great thoughts today, Randy. Uh, I want to tell everybody starts with a conversation. If you're looking to change your, your leadership game, coaching for relevance.com. Go there, start the conversation. Randy, thank you so much for being back here today. Well, I'll tell you what, it's always a pleasure. And we'll look forward to being back with you again, Steve. P.S. Look for the book. It's fantastic. You'll get details on the website. All right, Randy. It, it is that. So cool. <laughs> All right. We'll catch up soon. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, online radio box, and simple radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.